Hi, thank you all for being here. We just really receive all of your love and it has really been carrying us through during this time. And I know that my mom, she really just felt all of your love. She was on a really long journey with her battle and there would be times when she would just hit real lows and one of you would text her and send her a Bible verse, a word of encouragement. And she'd go from being low to back up with the Lord, seated in those heavenly places in Christ Jesus, where nothing could touch her, nothing could bring her down. And um, I just love that about my mom. She so close to the Father that all you had to do was just speak his language and she got it and it would minister powerfully to her. Um, she, she definitely spoke the language of love and I would just watch her and I would try to like learn how in the world is she doing this? But she would speak that language of the heart. And no matter how hard a person was, um, how many walls they had, she could get past them. And she could hit right and get in right where she needed to be and right where love needed to be and the Lord needed to be. And um, I just, she is my ultimate inspiration and um, for me I mean what I care about is being a woman of love and my mom was my model of a woman of love. She walked in the room and love walked in tangibly. You can feel it. For those of you who see dental people out there like whenever she'd come to the office the atmosphere changed. Everything shifted, and it was better. Everything was always better as soon as she arrived. And I can't, we can't really like put that into words. It's just something that's experienced and felt. And she just, um, oh my gosh. I mean, I'm just so honored that She's my mom, and that the Lord um, moved us back to Arizona. Uh, we had moved to Washington, and it was a really, really hard time. And um, I remember reaching out, and it was such a dark, dark time. There was just a lot of like warfare that we experienced while we lived there, and. My mom was just always love, open arms, and Derek and I and my son, we've got to be living with my parents for over a year, and we got to just really journey with her during this last stretch, and I tell you, what an honor to have such access to her. to shop for five hours afterwards, <laughs> nonstop. Like, it did not affect her. There was no negative ramifications. And she just intense, this woman, just intense, so strong, <laughs> so strong. And she just would keep on confounding the medical industry. They were just like, 
what? And he would say, now, my other patients, they wouldn't be like this, but now you, Mary, you're someone else. You're like, you're, you're in a, a category of your own. You're, you're a different kind of breed. And, um, but that's like her Jesus and the power of love that she had for everyone. She want, she would, her mantra was, I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. And that's why she had us as a family standing and believing. And um, gosh, such a strong woman. And her strength, it was supernatural. It was the Lord in her that was strengthening her. And I mean, during this time, I've been seeing that arising in myself. And I found such great comfort. Like, you would not believe that I'm almost seen to. She lives in me, and I have her DNA inside of my veins. And whether you're actually blood or adopted, like Andrew, he, he has her spiritual DNA. And so many of you do have her spiritual DNA and her legacy within you. And Wow, what an honor and what comfort. And um, I just, oh, I had such good times, such good times with that, that mama. I would call her um, little lady. Someday that just came out of my heart and she goes, Ambi, I was her Ambi. I love how you call me little lady. I feel so much love in it. <laughs> you can call me that again, say it again, you know. And um gosh, we like her and I we traveled together and we spent a month in Europe and just kind of putzed around all over the place and I remember God was developing a heart in me for England for many years and I had gotten word that he was just um waiting for me. I was waiting to go for who he was preparing that would go with me. And I thought maybe I'd go with like a ministry, um, some kind of outreach program. No, it was my mom. <laughs> and it took her some time to get her passport. For some reason, there was just a lot of like warfare on her getting her passport. But we finally went and just had the grandest time and made so many divine friendships. My mom would make friends with anyone and um, in the most random places and you become instant family and we had a divine appointment our first trip to London and um, we we're in a Starbucks and there was this girl that just talked to us two girls from Australia living there and we ended up getting so close that the next time we went to London we stayed with her in her home, and there wasn't enough space, so my mom slept in the bed with her. <laughs> they shared the same bed, and that's just how close the stranger had become family. And really, that's mom. Like, only Mary Elizabeth Zayas could do something like that. And, um, and I remember we got high tea at Kensington Palace, just her and I, and it was um, one of those moments, you know, you have those moments in life where it's like time stands still, and you tell yourself, I am going to remember this always, and she was speaking in her silly British accent, <laughs> and I was in so much because I had such belly laughter, my stomach was so sore, and I just remember I, I <laughs> love you so much. I am bursting. I am bursting with love for this woman, and I've never loved you more than I do right now. You know, and I would tell her, I love you more today than I did yesterday, and it would be true. Every day there would be more to love about her 
And it was just so fascinating. Like, you know, sometimes there are people that you like love, but you can only like take them in little bits and then you kind of like go, oh, you need some space or something. But my mom like, would never get tired of being around her. I could just hang out with her for hours and you would just, she would flow like just have such an ebb and a flow and um it's like her life was this dance or you know she's almost like a melody like a music to where you know there are those songs that you hear and they can just touch you so deep and just whoa really like speak to you right where you're at and they really can get music can get into these her family like intimate places within you. And that's how she was. And we could be so serious and intense and be interceding on behalf of England while we're over there in London in crazy, you know, utterances. And it was a wild experience. We had like the Pentecostal, the my Uncle Mark was talking about what she grew up with. And then we could just be really light and goofy. And she was such a kid such a little kid, and I even got, um, I even had the honor, there'd be some times where like, the Lord would have me mother her, and she would like, eat it up, she would love it, she'd go, oh, Ambi, I love it when you mother me, you know, she lost her mother when she was so young, and so sometimes, you know, she's definitely my mom, for sure, and I'm, I'm the daughter, but we had a friendship, but then sometimes I got to mother her. And that was really special and such an honor for me. And like I, you know, get to scold her a little bit. Her boss jobs would always fall down. Mama Mary! <laughs> I get out to her, Mama Mary! Um, and she would always say, I'm easy. Oh, I'm so easy. And I, I go, going. Going. I was like, oh, I can't that she was easy because that, that could mean something really bad. <laughs> she would just laugh and let me um, just like love lovingly correct her. You're easy going. <laughs> but that I knew that that was her heart and that's what she meant. And she was so easy going. And um, you know, I uh, her and I like we loved anything British and. There's that movie, Pride and Prejudice, and we loved it. And at the end, they, they say something like, being incandescently happy. And somehow we got deliriously happy out of that. And so there would be times in life where we would just have so much joy, and we'd look at each other and go, I am deliriously happy right now. And um, I am right now deliriously happy as I talk about my mom. And I will always be deliriously happy as I talk about her. And I, I definitely want to just honor her with joy, you know, and she just had such a contagious joy. And she taught me, she would say to me, Ambi, Give, give, because there'd be times when my feelings would get hurt and I'd want to like shut up, or close up, I should say, and shut off the giving um, in, in certain relationships. And she would say, no, honey, give. Continue to give. Don't let anything shut that down. You give. And, um, and I would, and I'm tired. And it's so fruitful and so life giving. And she knew. She knew what she was talking about. And people tease that like, you really could not give Mary. You really could not outgive her. And um, her closest friends would, would say that and totally agree that then they're givers. And they'd be like, yeah, Mary's like on a whole new level <laughs> with her giving. <laughs> she would like always be like, 
collecting gifts throughout the year and for some reason she would like wait until yeah it was your birthday and then she'd overwhelm you like big time she just loved to celebrate and loved to celebrate people and that was really her favorite thing in life was not accomplishments it was not her house being clean or organized or what she drove it really was people and relationships and letting them all know their value um, the value and the love each person she saw the value of the person and was able to just convey that and speak that forth and she's just intense you know and um love her like crazy and um yeah she would also to be something that i totally want to share she like loves celebrating and birthdays and were a big time for her and a tradition that we had in our family was called the birthday blessing and so um, she just, this was her favorite part, was we would go around the table, and it was Sean's birthday, for example, we would all go around and share what we loved about Sean. And it would be so life-giving, and we would just, you know, because there really is so much that's in you, in your heart, that's not said. And she looked for opportunities to be able to release it and let the river flow out of your heart and it would be like a gushing torrent and and the more that you practice it the stronger you get and then the more god gives you for others and then the more and the more that you just you just have to release you're compelled to you're compelled by love and um and that is so her and um, I, yeah, I remember her just saying, you know, I haven't even, she was telling, like, Derek this, I haven't even begun to love you, <laughs> mister. I haven't even begun to love you, Derek. And, uh, and it was profound, her love. But, um, so I really just, if anything is getting stirred up in you guys, um, some memories that you had of her, I do want to announce that if you haven't seen that, we um, have an email, legacy at gmail.com, and we would love it if you would email any stories, um, anything that's like blowing up in your heart um, about her and the impact that she's had on you. We want to compile them in a legacy book for um, her future grandchildren and so that you know Jesse and Zion can remember her, um, and then um, one of the things that I would like to do to honor her, um, she's such an intercessor, as you've heard everyone talk, um, and her grandmother taught her. You know, they had such a mantle of intercession, and that grandmother, my great grandmother, um, she raised two people from the dead. And afterwards, if you want to uh, come, like, you know, come approach me, um, I'd love to just intercede for my mom and pray and, you know, ask the Lord to see if we can raise her from the dead. Um, if you've got the faith for it, if you, as I'm saying this, if you got, yeah, let's do it, contact me. Um, you know, got nothing to lose and everything to gain. So, um, and I'm going to pass it over.